thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Ranjit, uh, uh, am I the first speaker or there is any speaker? Uh, sir, first speaker Varun sir was uh, not joining, so we will start with you, sir. Okay, so as uh, the objective of this particular program is to create more awareness for the uh, potential victims or the victims of cybercrime, especially from the range of people uh, from the age group of 60 and above. However, uh, in this era, there are two types of people. One is digital native and other is a digital immigrants. Currently, the digital natives are the people who are born with the internet. For example, people who are born in 2000 and later, they are called as digital natives. And people who are born before that, they are called digital immigrants. So, it is not necessarily that the elderly only are not aware of uh, the internet and its dynamics. But those people who are born before the internet arrived, they also have a problem with the internet and its uh, uh, contents, dynamics, and then the laws connected with it. The first thing to keep in mind uh, uh, for anybody who wants to learn internet is that the internet is more an American space rather than an international space. At least 80 to 90 percent of the servers, the companies, the internet service providers, the websites are hosted in the US and not in the other countries. One thing. And the governance of the cyberspace is more with the American laws rather than the other countries laws, even though every country has its own laws. The Convention of Cybercrime 2001 at Budapest was being done and uh, that convention brought in certain ideas that how uh, the nation member, member states can develop their own law based on the Convention of Cybercrime. So many of the nations have taken some of the uh, contents along with uh, the uh, Convention of Cybercrime and created a law. However, when it comes to India, at the same time, we created the Information Technology Act. This IT Act is nothing to do with the cybercrime except for five to six sections. Most of the sections are now connected only with the e-commerce, the digital signature and other stuff. And there is no exclusive law related to cybercrime. This is a big problem in our country because we have dedicated laws to crimes like uh, murder, robbery, rape and others. But we don't have a dedicated law related to cybercrime. And also, we also manage cybercrime through our physical laws like theft and others. And as pointed, the same problem happens with the criminal justice system also, where the police officers are also the same. They are also the digital immigrants. They are not digital natives. So naturally, the police officers themselves are also not much aware of the laws related to cybercrime, both from national and international perspective. And they are also not able to manage cybercrime. And they depend on various other people like software agencies like Google or others, the ISPs, the internet service providers. So that way round, you see, there is a dealing between various fields of cybercrime. As a founder of cyber criminology, I find the uh, field where I find the, there is no study which is looking into the causation of crime or the psychology behind cybercrime. Whereas when it comes to the other components of uh, cybercrime understanding like cyber security, it's a well established field. There are a lot of agencies which are working on cyber security. Many companies are working, government is working. And cyber forensics, mainly many government agencies are working, also private agencies are also working. However, we are not able to look into the psychology of the cyber crime and also the psychology of the victim as well as the psychology of the effect. In cyberspace, victims are certain. Cyber criminals or the cyber offenders are not certain. The reason is that because cyberspace provides anonymity, cyberspace provides identity dissociation. So somebody can be a male, but online they can come and chat with you in a female version. Somebody can be a 14-year-old boy, but can be chatting with you as 50-year-old lady. So 
So this kind of a transformation can happen in the cyberspace and that gives uh, more power to the offenders and uh, more vulnerability to the potential victims. So today we have gathered to speak about the elderly victims who are beyond the age of 60. Now, because the government is looking forward to make our country more digital in nature, now recently even digital money has come. Already we are using currencies through Paytm and other stuff, but now digital currency will take over and slowly, slowly, probably we may lose the physical currency. Now, more elderly people are going to use stuff like this, Paytm and others, they are already using it, but uh, they will more use online technologies. So when it comes to online technology they are going to use, they need to be aware of the uh, vulnerability there. Because the physical space vulnerability is entirely different. When it comes to physical space vulnerability, uh, elderly person, if they go to a bank, if they go to public places, they have some support. That means there is somebody you know? who is junior to them to guide them, you know? to assist them to go to a bank, to a market, to some places where potential vulnerability is reduced. But when it comes to online space, the same elderly person is going alone without any social support, without any support from the family members and others. And they have to be alone only because mostly now our society is becoming Americanized and uh, most of the elderly people are now alone than the previous times. Earlier times when we were the typical East society and not the West, most of the families were joint families. Now most of the families have become nuclear families. Also many of the children have left their parents and they have gone to higher studies to US and other countries. And that way old people are now staying alone, making them even more vulnerable because they don't have a, a support physical also as well as online also. So what I am seeing is that we have to create some kind of a knowledge base to the elderly people how to make some small small operations. So not necessarily they need to know the entire gamut of the cyberspace or entire understanding of the internet but at least small small things where the vulnerability happens. For example, a spoofing, how a website is spoofed, a website of a Kotak Mahindra bank, how it looks, but a spoofed website, how it looks. So these are very, very simple things we can show to them. And what is the use of HTTP and what is the use of HTTP? Yes, how secure it is. So these things be taught. And then elderly people online, they don't talk much like others. Right? They don't debate, they do they watch actually. They watch WhatsApp group, they do. Some people only involve in uh, debating. So that way most of the elderly uh, uh, people may not be a victim of uh, cyber bullying, but they may be victim of other things like for example cyber romance. Because since they are alone, they need somebody, okay. So every people like to have that love and affection and naturally elderly people also needs. But our Indian concept, uh, the Hinduism and others, we say that uh, there are four stages of life. The four stages of life as enunciated by Hinduism is Brahmacharya, Grigashta, Vanprastha, Sanyasa. So now what's happening? Those spaces have gone. So we were brahmacharyas, then Gregasta. Now the elderly people are expected by the society to go to the forest, which they will not go and they cannot go. So since they are not going to go to one prastha, they will go to cyber prastha. They will go there only because that is the easy option available. They are sitting in their home. So naturally everything is connected with cyberspace. Their Google TV is there. TV is also now a cyberspace TV. Earlier TV was not that. And the mobile phone they are having. So naturally when you are expecting uh, an Indian to go to one prasta or the forest, it's not going to happen. So we are going to go to cyberspace and where uh, it's a both a heaven and a hell. I always believe that cyberspace is both a heaven and hell where if you are trying to go to certain spaces, you will find heaven. Some other places you will find a hell. But both are very, very essential. So in this case, I believe that Elderly people need little bit direction and that is sufficient to them because they are 
already accomplished people. They are not children who are naive. They have accomplished in life and they have become uh, aged people. And more aged people means more knowledge is there. In fact, in India only we are giving retirement to professors. But in other countries, professors don't retire. So more they are old, more knowledge is there. Same case goes to any individual person. More old they are, more knowledge they have. But the only problem with elderly people is that they become rigid. They don't unlearn. They don't relearn. But what's happening now? They have to unlearn certain things from their mind and they have to relearn, especially if they want to be tech savvy, be something knowledgeable with the internet. To do something in the internet by terms of e-commerce or any other activity which they want to do to make friendships with people. So internet is a very wonderful tool but it's a double-edged sword. It will help people but at the same time it will also mar one's life. So that way I believe that uh, such programs which is organized by the SIFR will naturally help the uh, victims. So um, in the coming uh, hours to come, I think uh, Dr. Ranjit has many ideas to include more speakers who will speak something more, even more practical. So there are two aspects. One in terms of victimization is pre-victimization and post-victimization. In terms of pre-victimization, we need to have the understanding of the cyberspace and also the understanding of how internet operates and what are the laws available. So when it comes to laws, the Indian laws are very, very fluid in nature. And uh, when a victim goes to the police station, the police people are not going to help the uh, people. So we have developed a, a, a center for cyber victim counseling, me and my colleague, Dr. Devarati. We started a center for cyber victim counseling uh, NGO uh, in 2009. Now we are more, more than a decade more. Uh, more. And uh, we have counseled at least 5,000 more victims who have become victims of cyber crime. And uh, mostly they are women, children, and we have also counseled a lot of uh, elderly uh, victims. Uh, what we are finding, there are some patterns available in this kind of victimization is that the age group makes it and also the gender makes it a difference. When it comes to the gender, we find that men, they take more risk online compared to women. And they become more victims of property crimes rather than the uh, crimes that are connected with the uh, emotions. Whereas when it comes to the uh, women, they are more victimized in terms of emotional crimes rather than the crimes of uh, property. Women do lose money in romance camps. There are many women victims, elderly victims even, who are beyond the age of 60 also. There are men who lose them by providing love and affection and slowly extract money from them one by one. Like they will say, use the sympathy mode. They will use the sympathy mode and say that uh, my, uh, my father is in the hospital and he needs to operate it uh, and I need money for it. So naturally, the elderly woman is more motherly in nature. And a motherly woman would like to help a person who is in the age group of a son. But the relationship is more romantic. Not necessarily it is physical, but it is psychological. So naturally, the woman would like to help the man. So she gives the coordinates of the bank. She gives the password of the bank. Sometimes she gives the money or check, something like that. And I am hearing of victims who have lost even 150 lakh rupees with one person even. So this is happening for two reasons. One. The vulnerability of the elderly people online, two is that the money which is not physical in nature. For example, if somebody asks you 50 lakhs in cash, that requires minimum of at least three suitcases. But if somebody asks you 50, 000, 50 lakhs as a cash, as an online money, as a digital money, one single transfer within three seconds can be done using an RTGS from your bank to the other bank and you don't feel the loss. But the same thing when it happens in the physical space of the three suitcase which are you are going to lose, you will feel very much painful that you have lost it. 
So now what's happening is that because of the digital money through Paytm and other uh, online agencies, we don't feel the money at all. We go on spending money like anything than the previous times because we had a control like even 2000 is gone. We think it's a big money. But nowadays even 20,000 is not a big money or even 2 lakhs is not a big money because of we are not able to touch and feel the digital money. Same is happening with the victimization also. Suppose you are losing 2000 from your pocket when you are going in a market and you would like to report to the police because physically your bag is robbed and the money has gone. However, the same money you have lost uh, around uh, 20 lakhs even, you would be little reluctant to go to the police and uh, complain because of two reasons. One, you didn't understand the pain of losing the two, two lakhs. Two, you are scholarly, you are elderly, you are very senior. Now you cannot be mocked by a constable who will say that, Madam Ji, you are so senior, you are so knowledgeable. How can you lose this money? So now what's happening because of these two issues, the reporting behavior of elderly victims is very, very less. They lose money, they lose things, but they don't go and report to the police because of the fact they may be mocked by a person who is very, very young in age and normally elder people, ego, doesn't accept that. So they prefer that, okay, money is gone, let us not uh, report. That kind of attitude is come. So now, elderly people also need to change their mindset and learn new things like internet so that they need to unlearn certain things and relearn. When it comes to Western society, uh, we don't see age at all. Any person is named and called by names only. Nobody is calling a 60 year old person by uh, Madam Ji or uh, uh, Dadi Ma or Auntie. No, they don't like that. So any person will be calling you by your name only. So that society has a little problem with the terms of age. But still many have problems. But our society is having a dif different problem. Elderly people always are there to help only, not to seek help. So naturally they help people, but they, nobody helps them back. Or they also don't like, no, I, I will only help, I will not ask help from you. So uh, elderly people, they are little bit uh, shy to ask help. So in this way what happens is that the modern technology uh, is uh, being abused by many of the uh, unscrupulous element and they attack elderly victims very very easily compared to the other age group. So like more in the physical space also the vulnerability of children and older people are there. The same vulnerability is available online also where older people are being uh, victimized. So in my opinion uh, I think uh, this program today is only a teaser. This is not sufficient for the elderly victims to get the entire gamut of the internet. So today we would give an orientation uh, to the elderly people that how and what type of cyber crimes are happening against them and how to take care of themselves. However, I would request the organizer Dr. Ranjit uh, to make some awareness series and in that uh, you have to have some syllabi where you will be teaching what is mean by internet, what is mean by cyberspace, what are the cyber laws and how these laws are different from the conventional laws and what an elderly victim should do online. So the do's and the don'ts and also in case of pre-victimization, in case of post-victimization what they do and how to manage the social media which is governed by the Americans. What we do in India, even using a bad word, is very, very normal in America. So when somebody bullies an elderly person online, using a F word, the elderly victim will feel bad. But if you go back and complain to Google or Facebook, they will say that this does not uh, have 
an issue and it is not a violation of our community standards. The First Amendment of American Constitution gives a very, very broad scope and freedom in the internet. And that way, many people are doing wrong things online. So there's a saying which I have developed, if you can't say in the face, say in the Facebook. Because if you say in the face, it becomes defamation. But if you say in the Facebook, it is not a defamation. Why? In India, it may be defamation, but in the US laws, it is not called defamation. And the US laws are more concerned with the, their laws. Only. For example, some bad information has come online. We go to Google. Google will say that first go to the court of your local court. First go to your local Tana police station, file an affair. Then go to the court and get an order of removal. Then only we will remove that particular page or a link is also happening. Why? Because they say that this is not violating the community standard. So the level of defamation, the cyber defamation uh, is very, very uh, large in scope in the American, under the American laws. Whereas when it comes to Indian defamation laws, whether it is offline or online, we have very, very small scope. So our defamation can be done. A uh, elderly victim can go to the police station and complain that such a thing is happening against me. So please remove that. Our police will help. But finally, when it comes to Google, Google expects more things. Not only an FIR, but also a court order. And you know how our Indian criminal justice system works. First of all, for such small trivial thing, no police officer will first book an FIR. Even if they book their FIR, no court will say, we are accepting it. In case the court does also, then the verdict will take years long. But still, the victim undergoes the pain for years together because the defamation note is online continuously. And not only it is there, but it is shared by number of people. So, let us do one thing. Prevention is better than cure. Let us not look into the forensic aspects of cybercrime that comes later part. So in, when it comes to elderly victims, let us advise them prevention is better than cure. So how to prevent them from cyber victimization? So we can give them knowledge in terms of cyber security, knowledge in terms of cyber laws, and knowledge in terms of cyber criminology. Cyber forensics part is a technical part which normally any one of you as an expert can do later on. I would request the organizers to conduct some series of small programs, not necessarily titled as uh, elderly victims, but it can be titled as what is cyber security, uh, what are cyber laws, and how information technology act works. So you know very well the section 66A is uh, removed by the Supreme Court, and uh, that is because it is giving a draconian power to the police. But in this process, what happened is that the government has not replaced that 66A with some other law. So now anybody is cyber bullying anybody. No law is there. Even if you go to the police, they are telling there is no more 66A. So naturally, they will not put an FIR. So these are some of the fundamental problems I would like to highlight. And uh, I once again thank uh, Dr. Ranjit and uh, Professor Subraman for inviting me for this uh, elderly victims uh, program and uh, maybe in the future considering the time and uh, things in the future I would be uh, rather willing to do a pro bono uh, workshop for the elderly on cyber criminology itself. Thank you once again for all patience.